Blog Talk Radio. Uh, you know what time it is. It's time to hang out hey, with Mr. Cool. With Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa. Get the latest scoop from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa. Hey, with Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa, with Mr. Koopa. Get the latest scoop from Mr. Koopa, from Mr. Koopa. Welcome to the Bit Scoop with Coop. I'm your host, Coop. Season four, guys, is coming to an end. Last show, season finale tonight. Make sure you tell your family, your friends, your associates, your haters. Tell everyone to tune in to blogtalkradio.com forward slash the Bit Scoop with Coop. Or you can catch me here live on Facebook Live also. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end this show with a bang tonight. Season five will be coming soon. Um, just stay on the lookout for that. Meanwhile, the, um, before Season 5 start, make sure you do catch up on the latest episodes at TheBitScoopWithCoop.com. From, you can catch Season 1 all the way up to Season 4. Um, also, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MCOOP317. Also, guys, make sure you do catch me on Facebook Live, Facebook.com forward slash TheBitScoopWithCoop. Tell your family's friends, everyone to actually tune in. Well, enough about me. Ladies and gentlemen... My guest today, I have. Um, she is doing very big things in the acting bit in the acting world, as far as it goes for movie and television industry. She's actually coming up on um, a couple of Lion Gates movies, also Sony. She's doing big things, um, ladies and gentlemen. The one, the only Miss Lindsay Lamb. Welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much. That was quite the introduction. Hey, thank you, thank you very much. Um, Lizzie, how's your day so far? My day's been great. It's beautiful out finally. It's not so not so hot anymore. It's nice. <laughs> hey, I definitely understand that. I'm in North Carolina, so we've been having like a little cool breeze, so everything oh, is actually yeah. been in com- LA it's been like a hundred degrees every day. So it's finally been uh it's finally been nice outside. Wow. Wow, nice. I hope you're enjoying the weather. Yes. Now, um, Lindsay, like I was, oh yeah, you're welcome. Like I was telling everybody before, you know, you're doing very big things in the movie industry. Um, and you've appeared in a lot of different movies and everything already. And you have a bright future ahead of you for things that you're about to do. Um, now Lindsay, also on this show, we do talk about how you started in your career, your success, give advice on how to get into your career and much more. Now, um, Lindsay, a lot of people that's actually to you and some of your fans, they probably want to know this. Um, when did you first realize that you wanted to become an actress? Well, I remember my, my mom tells the story that when I was in first grade, my, uh, my teacher went up to her and told her what a creative child I was. And I think by creative, she meant to say that I was a little strange. And so uh, my teacher suggested getting me into theater. So I did my first professional show when I was 10 and um, oh. ever since then I've been you know pretty actively pursuing it and I you know it was, it was cool that I you know I was able to kind of figure out what I wanted to do from a very early age and it's been it's definitely mm-hmm. been hard but um but yeah it's probably since I was 10 years old is when I got started nice nice so when you first when you was 10 and you jumped into it did you have like a nervous bone in your body? How did you feel? Were you were you nervous about it when you first stepped into the public, or or was it just natural? Not really, I don't know. If when when you're ten years old, I don't I don't think that you, or at least I didn't really have that fear of rejection or that fear of you know people not you know wanting to see my work. I was just super excited to you know be on stage and. Uh, Sing and dance and act and I think that more recently maybe is when I I've you know if, if I if I, I you know I'll have a, a fear of you know not, not preparing enough or not doing well enough for an audition which you know that I think that comes kind of with everybody every now and then but um yeah when I was 10 I I really didn't care so much I just wanted to be out there <laughs> and you know what? And that's a good thing. That actually prepares you for where you're at now. Because if 
you was ready and you wasn't nervous and you jumped into it um, when you first started on it, when you was 10, I mean, that 10 year old person is probably still inside of you right now. Every time you get a chance, you know, you jump straight into it and you know, you have fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's one thing I want to congratulate you on you. I mean, you're, you're doing well from young age all the way up to now. And, you know, you have big projects that's coming up. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But let's fast forward. We saw how you started at the age of 10. Now you're up, and it's in the future now. Um, I'm, what type of obstacles did you have to go through, you know, to become a successful actress? Yeah, you know, I think that the the one of the biggest obstacles is that kind of delayed gratification, I guess you could say. It's been – you know, you have to keep up this momentum, even when you're not seeing immediate results. So, for instance, like, I have a film coming out that Lionsgate is distributing um, in March uh, called Blue Line. Um, but we didn't, we shot mm-hmm. that movie two years ago. So, it's you know, it's great to be able to be talking about it and stuff. But when you don't see those, like, immediate, like, oh, I just shot a movie. And here is how you can watch it. it you You have to keep up that momentum without without seeing those results right away. And um, so that's been like a constant kind of obstacle that like I'm having to just be patient, uh, which patience does not come easy for me. (laughs) So just finding that patience. And um, I also, I like to, I have, you know, I have a, I have a lot of people saying like commenting on how, you know, I have a lot of stuff coming up, but I, you know, I like to remind anybody who is kind of pursuing this, that, you know, for every one project that I have, there were at least 20 projects that I auditioned for, which I didn't book. So, you know, I have right. five cool projects that I'm so excited for coming out in the next few months. But I mean, there was probably a hundred projects that I was told, no, like you didn't book it. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of rejection. And I think just, uh, you know, keeping your focus um, and moving forward at, you know, uh, whatever pace, you know, is comfortable for you. I think that that's an obstacle that I'm, that I'm still kind of overcoming, you know, even today. Right. And I get you on that. You know, I believe that rejection and obstacles will actually make you stronger in what you're trying to do in life. So that's one thing that I believe that you can actually put in your pocket and say, Hey, this happened to me in the past, but look where I'm at now. And exactly. this is what made me a stronger person in the industry. Yes. So, I mean, for people that's listening worldwide right now, whenever you hear a no or you get a rejection, take it as a soft yes. That's the best thing to do. Um, and when I say a soft yes, that means you will have another chance. Don't think one and exactly. done and you're done. It's not like that. Yeah. You want to have another chance. Just keep working hard at it. Yes. Now, mm-hmm. um, what was it like working along with, uh, with Meg LaFall? Yes, Meg Lefav. I It was so cool. I was such a nerd because I love The Good Dinosaur. I love Inside Out. And so when I found out that I booked the pilot that she was producing, I was so excited. I mean, she was on set every day. She was so kind and helpful and, you know, helping us get into costumes and, you know, helping with craft services and just – she was so wonderful, and her uh, husband Joe Forte is the um, director, and he was amazing. It just really felt like, I mean, obviously, and then they had, you know, their son came to set, so it really was. I mean, it felt like a family environment because it was a family environment. It was just really, really, really fun. Um, so that's a pilot that I shot um, called Break Room, and hopefully, we'll have some news about where that's going to be going soon. Um, but it was, it was. Gr- so great working with her and she has so much coming up so uh, I was very fortunate to be able to get to work with her so closely nice big shout outs to Meg and Joe if you're listening to the show big shout outs to you Um, inside out um, all of the stuff that you've done I mean it's been great I mean anime is the thing so um, big shout outs to you keep doing what you're doing so if you haven't seen The Good Dinosaur, if you haven't seen Inside Out, check them out. It's, it's actually a good family show, uh, movie, excuse me. So it definitely is. Um, now, how excited were you when you found out that you received the role 
in the new Lion Gates movie, Hide in the Light? Um, so, yeah, Hide in the Light was, we shot that a year ago from now. We, were, we, we wrapped on Halloween of last year, and it's coming out Halloween of this year. So um, we're really excited for that. But I was ecstatic when I booked it. I usually, what I try to do is go into an audition, do my best, and then leave and not think about it. And obviously that's a lot easier said than done. Um, but I really, really, really try to do that or else you'll just, you know, you just eat yourself up, like, wondering what's going to happen. Um, but when I auditioned for Hide in the Light, I read with uh, the director, Mikey McGregor, and I just completely mm -hmm. fell in love with him. He's just so wonderful. And so I remember leaving and being like, oh, I need to work with these people. I have to book this. And so when I got the call that I did, I was, I was beyond excited. And um, it's an ensemble cast uh, so, and which I love, and it was probably one of the first times that I worked with an ensemble cast where everybody was, like, the same age, and we just had such a blast filming that. Nice. Um, can you tell everybody that's listening worldwide right now a little bit about the movie, not to spoil the whole movie, but, you know, give them a little basics yeah, about it. Yeah, of course. So it's a, a group of friends um, who... Uh, they're doing uh, exploration for school, and um, they decide to explore an abandoned orphanage and get trapped inside, and they have to fight off uh, supernatural forces in order to escape alive. Wow. Oh. Nice. Not, you can't tell you who lives and dies, <laughs> but there's a lot of cool elements to it and twists and turns and... Um, yeah, I'm really, I haven't seen it yet. So it comes out on the 31st. And so I think, we're, you know, everybody's going to kind of see it for the first time together. So we're really, really looking forward, for it, looking forward Not, to it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Worldwide is listening. Make sure you do go check out this movie, um, Hiding the Light. This could be something that you want to see. Take your friends, your associates, um, take your grandma, your cousins, your uncles. It doesn't matter. <laughs> take them. Check the movie out. This could be something worth watching. Um, now, I want to ask you about this, Lindsay. It's a movie that's coming out. I'm not sure how much you can say about it right now, but is there anything you could talk about with the uh, movie by Sony, Apple of My Eye? Yes, Apple of My Eye. So if you look it up right now online, um, it's formerly called And Then There Was Light. So I think that that might be a little confusing. I, I should have mentioned that too before. But, um, but yeah, so now it's called When Sony... Sony decided to change the name, so it's now Apple of My Eye. Um, we shot it mm -hmm. in April in Bradenton, Florida, which is just south of Tampa. And um, it's about a young girl who is in an accident, which causes her to lose her sight. And uh, she is definitely more of a horse person and can't really find the right dog. So the head trainer at um, Southeastern Guide Dogs, which is the location that we shot at, um, so the head trainer, uh, he who play, uh, is played by Burt Reynolds, he trains um, a mini horse to be her seeing eye companion. Um, and so it's a good, it's going to be a really good family movie. Um, it definitely has some, um, you know, mature-ish elements to it, obviously, because this little girl goes through a traumatic accident, which causes this whole situation to happen. But um, it's going to be a really, really, really just great movie and uh sony entertainment is releasing it worldwide in december um so yeah my uh my best friend directed it her name is Cecile landon and um i was that's the first movie first feature film that i um i'm associate producer on it so i really got to work from day one of it and uh, you know we're still working on it now so that was a really cool experience um and then i'm also in it so very, very, very excited for Apple of My Eye. It's probably definitely definitely one of the one one of the films that I'm most excited for. Um, I think it's just gonna be really well received and it's such a good message and just a film that you can doesn't matter how old you are, I think that everybody's really going to like it. Nice. So how was the atmosphere, you know, behind the scenes of Apple of My Eye? How was it, like, did the cast get along real well? Um, did the crew get along real oh, well? Yeah. Or you know, was it a very exciting time behind the scenes? Oh, no, it was it was so great. So we um, we all stayed. So we were, I mean, everybody 
was from um, Los Angeles. I think our DP, um, Adrian, he lives in Connecticut, I believe, but every, pretty much everybody was from, pretty much everybody was not from Florida, um, oh. at least cast-wise, and then even most of the crew was flown out, um, and then we had a few locals. Um, but so we really didn't know anybody. We didn't know the area, so we all stayed at um, our producer's house, and um, it really just ended up being, like, the place that ever we would go to after we wrapped. So we would have everyone over. Um, I would always be cooking pasta. We'd sit out by the pool, have a glass of wine, and just, like, talk about the day. And we all became just really, really, really close. And, you know, to this day, like, I, I talk to most of the cast on a daily basis. Um, so oh, wow. there, it, it, it was a very cool experience, and it really was like a – I think there's something to say about when – you don't know anybody and you don't know the area and you only have each other that you just really, really bond. And um, I think that it could go south or it could be great. And fortunately this, this went really, really great. And we all just became very close. <laughs> Man, that is good. Big shout outs to the whole, the whole cast and crew of Apple of my eye. You guys are doing big things and I know you're doing big things. If a whole bunch of strangers came together and you are all just, click like it wasn't nothing so i wish i could have been behind the scenes on that one also just to see how everything was um congratulations ahead of time lizzie for this movie that's coming out um yeah. congratulations ahead of time also for hiding the light you're doing big things continue down the path that you're doing and like i said i believe bigger things will be happening for you that's coming up um now what one thing i did find out and i want to know if this is true or not Lindsay. okay i heard that in hiding the light that you did your own stunts. <laughs> that is true. Oh wow! <laughs> so I tell me your of, I, Actually, I do all of my own stunts for the films that I've been doing so far. And I, if you, I, when my mom finds, when I, my mom found out about this, she was like kidding me because I am the clumsiest person. I trip over my own feet. I, I am. I would be the last person who you would expect to be doing these stunts, but um. I kind of stumbled, <laughs> literally stumbled, um, into doing it, and uh, it's been so cool. I've been training um, with different martial arts, and then for Hide in the Light, I did uh, my first wiring stunt, which is really cool. So I was hooked up to uh, an apparatus of sorts that came out of my back, and I was, you know, uh, thrown into uh, a crash pad um, going backwards, so that was that was really cool, and um, I have on my Instagram um, a slow mo video of that. You'll have to scroll back, obviously, like a year, but um, but yeah, we have a slow mo video of it, and it looks so cool. So I'm really, really excited to see how it turns out with all like the special effects involved um, in the final film. Nice, and um, and talking about you know social media, how can your fans and people that's actually watching right now? How can they find you on social media? Oh, yeah. So I, uh, my Instagram is, so my name is Lindsay Lamb. So my Instagram is lamb, and then L91. And, uh, you know, I am trying to get better at the whole Twitter machine, but I, <laughs> I'm still working on the Twitter machine. But if you wanted to look me up there, um, it's just Lindsay Lamb underscore. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you do go follow her on Instagram. And she's trying to get better at Twitter, people. So let's all encourage her <laughs> to tweet more. So we're going to make sure we do that. Um, make sure you follow her, especially on Instagram. Go back one year and check out check out the stunt. She got in slow motion. She says that she's one of the clumsiest people that she ever known. So um, I want to see how well she does in this stunt. I'm going to go back one year, and I'm going to look at it myself. So make sure you do yeah, follow her on social media. Yes. Um, of course. Now, if you could pick one actor and one actress to act with you in a movie, who would it be? One actor and one actress, and what type of movie would it be? Okay, so are we thinking the same movie? It could be, it could be two different movies, or it could be the same. Either way. Okay, well... I'm I'm torn for my actor. I'm torn between Rain Wilson and Tony Hale. Okay. Um, 
So I, I love Rain Wilson. I grew up watching, not grew up, I mean, I still watch The Office, and it's just something that, like, my family all comes together and we watch, and I think that he is the absolute funniest, funniest person. Um, so I adore him, but also I love Tony Hale. Um, we've been, I've been watching him, you know, Arrested Development and then Veep, and then I met him at the, uh, the Drunk History premiere party a few weeks ago, and I completely mm. geeked out over him. So maybe I, I feel like maybe I have to wait until I emotionally move past that in order to <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Rain Wilson or Tony Hale um, as my actor. And then I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Elizabeth Banks as my actress because I think that she is just outrageously talented and underrated and just, I just adore her. So I'm going to go with one of those actors and then Elizabeth Banks. And, um, you know, I guess I would think that I would want to have them in a, a comedy. I think that that makes mm. a lot of sense. I think that we could all. So of, I would what would your role? Be able to, what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so what would your role be in that comedy with those two? Uh, I think Who that you, I would just want to, well, I want to be their play. friends in real life, so I feel like I would just want to be their friends in the movie. <laughs> hey, I think we need to make that happen. So if they're listening, <laughs> let's all get together and make this happen. I, mean, I don't <laughs> see why not. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> hey, I don't see why not. So, I mean, like I said, you're doing big things, and I believe that karma will pull all of you all together. So I believe it will happen or fate will pull you all together. So, yes. Okay, yes. Definitely. Now, okay. Now, Lindsay, what is your, what is your ultimate goal as far as it goes as an actress? You know, I just, I really just want to continue working on projects that challenge me as an actress. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been, uh, I've started to produce. So that's been another really cool uh really cool element but um you know i've been fortunate in the sense that i've been able to work so closely with my good friends i mentioned castile um also richard switzer um i've been doing lots of films with with those two and um being able to just work with people who you really care about on projects that you really care about i mean of course you know there's a, there's always that monetary aspect so you know you want to be able to take care of yourself but aside from that you know i guess my my ultimate goal would just be to keep doing what i'm doing with the people who i really care about nice nice now Lizzie, do you feel that it's harder to get into the movie industry compared to what it was 10 20 years ago um it's hard to say because i wasn't i mean from what I have heard, um, right. I think that it is harder. Um, I think that with social media, it can either really hurt you or it can kind of hinder you um, in a sense. I know, you know, there, I've been on a few auditions recently that, you know, they want to know how many Instagram followers you have. And something like that would never have happened, you know, 15 years ago because Instagram didn't exist. Um, so... There, I think that it's just different. I don't know if it's harder or easier, but I just think it's very, very different. Um, when I was, you know, when I was auditioning when I was 10 years old, um, we just, you know, I had a black and white headshot and had a little resume on the back. And if you yep. were like, if you were right for the part, then you got the part. There wasn't so much, so many other elements to it. So um, I just think it's different and you have to kind of just educate yourself and know how to, play the game for lack of a better term. You have to, you know, know <laughs> how to work it, work the, work the industry, I guess. That's, and that's very true. And Lizzie, it seems like it's, it's like a double edged sword in my opinion. Um, some people that you actually go um, out to try to audition for, they play the popularity game. It, it doesn't matter about mm -hmm. your skill. It's how many people do you have following you? And then you have right. some that say, let me see what you can do. And yeah. from there, They'll say, okay, what are you doing in social media? But they'll put your skills mixed in with it at the same time. So I believe it all depends on who you're actually auditioning for. Some people, it's just straight ratings. 
Who are you yeah. have? And who I mean, do you yeah, have? I'm who? Not, I'm definitely not hating on that social media world. Uh, I mean, if you if you are a filmmaker and you're thinking, you know, okay, so this person has, you know, a million followers on social media, that's a million people who, like, my film could potentially reach. So it makes sense. It's just, it's just right. different. It, it is. But, you know, I think it, it kind of, like I said, it's a double-edged sword. It kind of hurts people. But at the same time, it doesn't. Because there are some people, I'm going to keep names nameless, um, there are some people that cannot act, but they they got um, 100,000 followers, and they're thinking about the money. I was about the people that actually hired them to come take the job. When there's mm-hmm. other people out there that's actually, you know, working their butt off to get to where they at, and they only have 4,000 followers. But it's like right. they pass that skill up. So... Right. Well, and probably, I, I, I guess that we would just hope that that at the end of the day and when it's all said and done, then the person who is going to keep working hard is someone who's going to have the longevity in their career, you know? Right. You're right. So anybody that's out there that's worth walking, you're right. And whoever is watching this worldwide or listening to this worldwide, if you are trying to become an actor, an actress, producer, director, Anything in the movie and television industry, don't don't say to yourself, "Well, I don't have a hundred thousand followers, I can't do it." Go out there, and still give your best. I mean, put it in there. You never know what will happen. You know, at the end, you have to remember it's all up to God. He's going to choose that one. So if it's meant for you to have, it's meant for you to have. So go out there, bust your butt, work like you never worked before. So that's my personal okay. opinion on that. Yes. Um, now, Lizzie, I know you're a busy woman, so I'm not going to hold you up long. But um, what advice? What advice would you give any male or female that's trying to become an actor or actress in the movie or television industry? You know, I think that one of the biggest things that has helped me out here is, uh, and I think that it would help anybody, no matter where they are, um, is having a core group of people with similar my like a similar mindset and similar goals who can really be that support system for you it's mm-hmm. it's i mean it's definitely not easy finding these people but once you do i think that that could be it, it's been a game changer for me um and you know having people who you can depend on i mean and i think that that rings true in any industry but especially in acting when you have so much rejection it's it's nice to have, you know, it's just nice to have like a good group of people. And, um, my advice, I guess, would be to get into an acting class. I think that that acting class is so important. Um, and then, you know, regardless, then you will be surrounded with people who, you know, kind of, who have the same goals, um, you know, for a couple hours, at least once a week. Um, so that's really helped me. Um, I think also you have to, you just you have to have thick skin, and um, that's not something that you can kind of learn overnight. But I think knowing your self worth and knowing that you know it's just it's just a project, and there will be so many others, and just to not give up and to you know you you have to. I think that what I've kind of come across out here um, on a, you know a lot of occasions is people being like kind of lukewarm about whether or not they want to be an actor. And I think that you have to know 110% that this is what you want to do because it is, it's tough. And so you have to give it 110%. And, um, you know, it, I, there's no such thing as an overnight success. And, and if you hear, if, if anybody hears like, oh, you know, yesterday they were nobody and now they're this movie star. It's, it's, that's the farthest thing from the truth. You know, everybody's been working. Everybody who is very successful has been working for years and years and years. And um, there, there's no overnight successes. We're, oh, all, we're all working really hard. Yes. So just don't, you know, just don't give up when, when it doesn't happen, you know, within a month or two or even a year or two. Just, you know, don't give that's up. That's true anything. words right there, Lindsay. Very true. Yes. Lizzie, I want to say thank you for the advice. People that's listening worldwide right now, um, if you are trying to become an actor or an actress, I echo everything Lizzie just said. Don't give up. If you, like I said earlier, if you get a no, take it as a soft yes, continue. Try again and keep trying. Don't give up off of this because they're going to see how well you can take rejection 
at the same time. Yeah. So bust your butt, work, work, work. I'm not trying to sound like Rihanna, but work. Seriously. Mm-hmm. So do your thing out there. Lindsay, thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for coming on the show. It was a honor having you up here. And I would love to have thank you, you so back much in the for future. Having me. Um, yes, yeah, thank I would, you. I would that. Thank you. All right, no problem. Well, guys, that's the end of season four. Um, Lindsay Lamb closed the show for me. Season five is coming soon, guys. And Lindsay, make sure you have a good night, and we will be in contact soon. Thank you. Sounds and good. And until next time. All right. And until next time, everybody on the Bit Scoop with Coop.